Hi everyone, a very good day to you all. Welcome to another ArcGIS tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to go from this to this. So basically, what we are going to do is we are going to create a heat map based on some station temperature information. As you can see over here, uh, in my ArcGIS interface, I have loaded up two shapefiles. The first shapefile is a polygon of this country, Mongolia. And the second shapefile is a point shapefile, which con contains the temperature information. If I were to open the attributes table, you can see that uh, each of these stations have its corresponding temperature value in centigrades. In order to better visualize it, probably I can put it under the labels. All right. Now it represents the, the temperature within and around the country recorded during a certain period. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to convert this information into a spatially varying map using interpolation methods. Now first of all, I would like you to go to this Arc toolbox and go to Spatial Analyst Tools. And under interpolation you can see this option called IDW so for this tutorial I'm going to do the interpolation using IDW and both Krieging methods now these are different interpolation methods uh, in your own time you can do some research about the algorithms behind that mm, let's start with the IDW method and now add my as my uh, point input features my points are going to be the temperature points so I'm just going to select temperature from here and my z value is actually going to be the temperature value which correspond to these temperature figures in centigrade and the output cell size as you can see my data frame is in meters so i'm just going to maybe reduce this to about 1000 and i will go to the environments and under processing extent I'm going to select my processing extent to be my be the extent of my uh, country shapefile, which is the shapefile, which is the extent of the shapefile called Mongolia. And after that, you can click OK, and then click OK again. Alright, now you can see that ArcGIS sort of converted this point temperature information into a spatially varying uh, temperature map, which is actually quite uh, handy as you can see over here. These uh, dark green values refer to temperatures of about 15 degrees to 16 degrees, I would say. And these colors over here correspond to higher temperatures starting from let's say 18 degrees all the way up to 23 degrees. Now. I can play around with the color scheme a little bit more, but uh, just for the sake of showing you the differences between IDW and Krieging method, I'm also going to do the same interpolation using Krieging method. So here I will select Krieging. And now as the input feature, I will select temperature similar to the previous step. Just going to change this to 1000, go to environments, and select my processing extent to be the boundary of the country click OK alright now you can see that let me just rename this to Krieging and this one to IDW alright now if I turn off this Krieging layer you can see that these two different interpolation methods still have some some minor differences so that's actually due to its uh, due to how how the interpolation method is written in terms of uh, its algorithm uh, let's so for me i personally prefer the krieging interpolation method so i'm just going to turn off this layer and now i'm just going to play around with the color scheme a little bit so let's go to the properties of this krieging layer and go to symbology and instead of having a classified type of a classification I'm just going to go for an, a stretch type classification 
in which the gradients from high to low are much more smoother than having a classified having the classified option and as the color scheme I'm just going to go to this and now you can see that my high temperature values are corresponding to blue color and low temperature values are corresponding to red color and I would like to have this in the opposite direction so I'm just going to click on this one invert click apply and click OK alright now you can see even from the legend over here these uh, red color areas correspond to quite high temperature values and the blue color areas correspond to quite uh, low temperature values relatively uh, such as 15 degrees now one more thing that I would like to do is actually to clip this raster into the boundary of my country now I can do that using a simple extract by mask method so in order to do that I go to the search panel and select extract by mask so I'll drag my Krigging raster layer and just drop it over here and I'm going to feature I'm going to mask that data using the boundary of the country which is Mongolia and just to be on the safe side I'm just going to go to the environments again and as the processing extent I'm going to select the boundary of the country again all right now click OK okay now that did the trick for us but it took away the colors that we initially assigned so I'm just going to turn off this Krigging layer and go back to this layer and then pro basically do the same color assignment that I did before invert the colors right so for the time being I can actually turn off these temperature values as well and to make things a little bit more prettier I can even add one base map add base map I'll go for the open street map alright now you can see that we also have the base map uh, now if you want to export this map in a high quality JPEG image you can also actually do that first of all I would recommend you to zoom in to an area of your preference which covers our region of interest and then over here go to this layout view and from here I'm going to change the layout to be A4 size but landscape alright now I'm going to just do some basic stretches over here okay uh, you can add this information such as uh, a north arrow just by going to insert north arrow I'll go for the S3 north arrow I can place it over here and I'm also going to add one scale bar which is in kilometers going to place that one over here or probably somewhere over here I'm also going to quickly rename this raster to be heat map in Celsius alright now I'm going to go to insert and then add, add a legend so you can see that both the elements have been already added 
so we just keep on clicking next unless you want to make uh, some specific changes all right and now finally I'm just going to add one title and as the title I'm going to input heat map of heat map of Mongolia maybe I can double click on that and if I want to increase the font size or do any further changes I can also do that yeah that looks quite okay to me maybe I'll decrease the size just remove this legend over here and then I will go to items select both and select the font size to be about 12 all right I think that's good enough right, finally you can export this map uh, to be a JPEG image so in order to do that you can go to file export map and as the resolution you can put about maybe 300 dpi depends on how high you want your resolution to be all right it'll take a while to export the image and now you can go to your folder and open the JPEG image and this is how it's going to look like pretty cool isn't it so that's about it for this tutorial I hope you liked and if you did uh, press thumbs up and and consider subscribing to my channel to get more interesting GIS based tutorials and videos on a weekly basis Thank you and have a good day.